Welcome to a new episode of AI's Hit. So, as usual, uh, like every week, we will focus on one photographer, uh, famous from the past or present, to try to understand where AI is in terms of understanding and expressing photographic style. So, let's directly ask AI for the bio of the photographer. Lenny Riefenstahl was a German film director, actress, photographer, and dancer, born on the 22nd of August, 1902, in Berlin. Germany. She is best known for her association with Nazi propaganda films, particularly Triumph of the Wall, 1935, and Olympia 1938, which were made during Adolf Hitler's regime. Before her involvement in filmmaking, Riefenstahl was a successful dancer and actress in Germany during the 1920s. She gained fame for her role as the lead actress in the film The Holy Mountain, 1926, and later as a dancer in the film Reed Zucraft and Schonheit. Ways to Strength and Beauty. In 1926, Riefenstahl also directed and produced her first film, Das Blaue Licht, The Blue Light, in 1932, which showcased her filmmaking talents. Her collaboration with the Nazi Party began in the early 1930s when she was commissioned to create a short film about the Nazi Party Congress in 1933. Impressed with her skills, Hitler asked her to produce the feature-length propaganda film Triumph of the Wall, which documented the 1934 Nuremberg Rally. The film, despite its technical achievements, is considered one of the most effective and notorious propaganda pieces in history, promoting Nazi ideology and glorifying Hitler and the party. In 1938, Riefenstahl directed Olympia, a documentary film about the 1936 Summer Olympics held in Berlin. While it is celebrated for its groundbreaking cinematography and innovative techniques, it is also criticized for its pro-Nazi and propagandistic elements. After World War II, Lenny Riefenstahl faced significant controversy and was classified as a Nazi sympathizer. She was arrested and briefly detained but was not convicted of war crimes. Riefenstahl maintained that she was an artist, not a propagandist, and claimed that she was apolitical, merely following her passion for filmmaking. After the war, she struggled to find work in the film industry due to her association with the Nazis. Despite her controversial past, Riefenstahl continued to work as a photographer and published several photographic books, including The Last of the Nuba, 1973, and The People of Kau, 1976, which documented indigenous African tribes. Lenny Riefenstahl's legacy remains a subject of debate and controversy. While her work is celebrated for its artistic merit and technical achievements, it is also criticized for its role in promoting Nazi propaganda and supporting a totalitarian regime. She died on 8 September, 2003, in Puking, Bavaria, Germany, at the age of 101. So yeah, the first two pictures, as usual, I ask um, Dali and Midjourney. Dali will be on the left, Midjourney on the right, to take to take a picture or to give us a picture of someone that looks like the photographer taking a photo behind their camera, a photo in the style of the photographer. And so here, I'm not sure they really represent the photographer of the week's style. Maybe a little for Midjourney, and yeah. Here are the first other pictures. Usually when it's usually the birthplace, which is illustrated, or uh, as we can see after, the early parts of the career of the photographer. Uh, not sure these represent really the style. Even so, I really asked for the style. This week it's not very in phase, in my opinion. We can see also the, this photographer, a woman photographer, obviously, um, is also a director, kind of like the picture from Midjourney a little bit more than Dali. Uh, but suddenly we have those pictures in the movie theater, uh, which are definitely based on something from the aesthetics of that photographer. Uh, it's kind of a controversial photographer in terms of its impact uh, politically, historically, but it was also a very innovative uh, photographer. So uh, interesting how the the movies on the right pl in the right place projected on front of the crowd uh, for Dali, but basically Midjourney doesn't understand that people are watching the movie on front of them, not in their back. But anyways, the picture was interesting because it kind of reflects, in my opinion, it's pretty close to what we could have found uh, with photographer in question. Um, even so, it's maybe a little bit more compatible with uh, Midjourney style. Same thing with the pictures after, where 
obviously the impact of this photographer in the political uh, environment she was in. Uh, kind of find interesting how those sport uh, sport men, sport men and women are kind of clones. It's kind of chilling when you think of the historical facts. If you know the history of around the photographer a little bit more. Um, and yeah, the last pictures, they actually, everything was kind of a black and white, but this photographer used color in a certain way. And I think very interesting how Mid Journey in that case came out with actually colors that look like the work of the original photographer. So that's really, in my opinion, probably something that's really based on real data. Uh, anyhow, as since last week, I tried to include some original works, small excerpts. Um, definitely go see the real work in books, in museums, and on on really better informed uh, mediums. Um, but here are a few examples um, of the style. Basically, in her first uh, work was not first work, but was uh, the work uh, around the Olympics, um, where she really used. Uh, Tele Lance uh, more. She was kind of the, one of the, not inventors, but she was one of the pioneers of sport photography, definitely for those Olympiads. Um, and the way she depicts, kind of in an old style, but uh, human body, and really very interesting. She has a very interesting piece of work apart from the political controversies. Uh, um, actually, I'm not sure there are controversies, but uh, yeah, she's, she was really implicated in a weird regime, uh, not to say the least. Uh, but here, aesthetically, that gives you an idea. And the last pictures are really from that African work, and uh, which I was talking about before. Uh, but as we have the AI, let's ask for a little bit more about uh, Lenny Riefenstahl's style. Lenny Riefenstahl's photography style was distinct and innovative, setting her apart from other photographers of her time. Some of the key elements that made her style unique include, technical prowess, Riefenstahl was a master of technical aspects of photography, using cutting-edge equipment and techniques to capture her images, she was known for her meticulous attention to detail and her ability to experiment with various camera angles and lighting setups. So Dali on the left, again Midjourney on the right. Um, I think those two first two pictures are kind of interesting. They do in some ways represent some of the style of the photographer, definitely. The way the bodies are offered to us, uh, um, the aesthetics. Cinematic approach. Riefenstahl's background in filmmaking heavily influenced her photography style. She approached photography with a cinematic eye, creating visually striking and dramatic compositions that often resembled movie stills. Emphasis on movement. Inspired by her early career as a dancer, Riefenstahl had a keen eye for capturing movement in her photographs. Her images often portrayed dynamic and energetic scenes, showcasing the fluidity of human bodies in action. Same thing for the next two pictures. Maybe Mid Journey is a little bit better in representing the weird, well, the innovative uh, point of views that she used. Um, but otherwise, it's not as not as nice as the two pictures before, in my opinion. Fascination with the human form. Riefenstahl's photography often featured the human body as a central subject. She had a particular interest in showcasing the physicality, athleticism, and grace of her subjects, whether it was in her dance photography, her documentation of African tribes, or her sports photography during the 1936 Olympics. Again here, I think Dolly does a pretty good job of showing those, maybe the framing, Dolly's framing too tight since the uh, arrival of the new user interface, but probably to make money because you can extend, if you pay, you can extend the canvas in which it develops the pictures, which I think is pretty sad because it's not a really nice user interface compared to what Midjourney offers now. And here Midjourney, uh, Riefenstahl was a pioneer of color and that's the kind of colors that we could find. And spontaneously here, Midjourney is definitely offering us some, some colors. So I think there's something going on with the database, which is correct in terms of inspiration. As for the foot from Dali, it looks like an animal foot with some fur. Kind of weird. We know AI has difficulties with fingers and toes. So here is an example. Wondering why it went to the animal style, but anyhow. Cultural and anthropological exploration. In her later career, Riefenstahl focused on photographing indigenous African tribes, 
such as the Nuba and Macau. Her photography captured the lives, traditions, and cultural practices of these communities, showcasing her interest in ethnographic documentation, artistic ambition. Riefenstahl saw herself primarily as an artist rather than a documentary photographer, and her work often reflected her pursuit of creating aesthetically pleasing and impactful images. Her photographs had a sense of artistry and were not solely intended for journalistic purposes. Here again, thanks Dali was this too tight of a framing, but yeah, very modern approach to taking the picture. Again, it's a selection of the best that came out of my prompts, but uh, really inspired by what uh, ChatGPT gave us. And on the right, that could work out, maybe a little too clean in a mid-journey style more, and not that inspired by Riefenstahl's work, but yeah. Despite the controversies surrounding her Nazi propaganda films, Riefenstahl's photography talent and innovation remain undeniable. Her groundbreaking approach to photography and her ability to capture the essence of movement and the human form have left a lasting impact on the art of photography. However, it's essential to remember the context of her work and the role she played in promoting Nazi propaganda, which continues to be a subject of ethical debate in the history of photography. Here definitely, I think it's kind of a win for Midjourney, really going to the colors spontaneously, the colors that Riefenstahl used for that latest work. Um, Dali's doing something kind of more generic, uh, definitely this African woman is could be a picture of Riefenstahl, but the framing's too tight, and I'm not going to expand manually the canvas every time with this weird and awkward um, user interface uh, Dali is imposing on its users. I think it's they need to upgrade the, the user experience in that sense. Uh, but anyhow, I think the mid-journey result is really interesting. Use of unconventional perspectives. Riefenstahl was not afraid to experiment with unconventional angles and perspectives to create visually striking images. Her willingness to break away from traditional composition norms added a sense of dynamism to her work. Here again, the, the pauses, the representation, the choreography, the way the picture is taken, I think both are doing pretty good. Um, Midjourney maybe has a style that corresponds more to what... Uh, what Riefenstahl did, but in any case, I think that's, that is okay. But as we have a virtual Lenny Riefenstahl at our disposal, let's ask her for a custom creation. So um, could we have um, a picture of uh, two Maritonians racing on a, uh, in a track, a circular stadium, a gigantic stadium you know, in front of a very large crowd, a photo taken in the style of photographer Lenny Riefenstahl. Like every other week, I will regroup Dali and then we'll go to Midjourney. Uh, here, Dali is offering us two pictures where there's really definitely motion blur. I'm not sure we find... I'm kind of disappointed with the results here. Uh, we, we see the circularity of the stadium. We definitely feel a large crowd. But in terms of style, uh, well, apart from the black and white... I don't know, I don't find it. And it's kind of drawing-like. Dali many times goes to creating pictures that look more like drawing than pictures. Uh, I'm not sure why. I think it kind of, the quality kind of went down in the last weeks. So I don't know really why. But here it's not the lack of a basic uh, documentation as a photographer. But uh, anyhow, the two next pictures, same thing. It's entertaining to see how it creates those pictures, but too much motion blur compared to the style of the photographer. Maybe some impact of taking pictures that Taylor lens from afar. Otherwise, I don't think it works very well. As for New Journey, it's kind of weird because we do get some of his understanding of what's going beyond, behind. Definitely a circular stadium. The track is, I think it understands that Running is on a, in a straight line, doesn't understand that there should be a correspondence between the track and, and the stadium. I don't know if understand is the right term. And the runners kind of are paused in a weird way. They could actually look like something from Riefenstahl's work. So again, taken from afar. Um, kind of curious about the hands on the left picture in the crowd. Probably some inspiration from the period. I don't know, it's kind of weird, kind of scary, but that's what came out. 
Um, and then the last two pictures, uh, again, I selected the pictures that came out best uh, according to the prompt I created from the information from ChatGPT, but from ChatGPT, yeah, from simply from my prompt uh, I told before. Uh, what I find really interesting is the picture on the right. Obviously, the runners have stopped running and they're in the crowd looking at the circular track this time, which follows the circular uh, shape of the stadium, but super weird. <laughs> crowds everywhere but kind of very surrealistic and on the left the circularity of the track doesn't really go with the stadium and we have this huge bird on the top fence if you look at the size of the crowd compared to the crowd there it looks like a huge bird kind of interesting to try to figure out why ai is deciding to do that like this i can maybe understand the process of imitating things it sees but super weird in that case Anyhow, not a very successful week, week in my opinion, but please uh, comment and, and propose other things uh, below. You can also let voice messages for the podcast. And yeah, hopefully it was entertaining and catch you next week. Mm -hmm.